a huge acknowledgement to my friend Glenn Sanford, who has created this phenomenal dude. I just want to tell you how how inspired I am by what you've created here. Uh, you're a phenomenal example of entrepreneurship, uh, thinking outside the box and bringing along the marginalized. So many brokers here in the room that would never have a chance at really having an equity position. So hats off to you, man. It's amazing what you're doing. And I'm proud to be your friend. Uh, early this year, like in, in, in December, January, I, I started to get invites to Clubhouse. I'm like, ah, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then I, I um, decided to, to jump on it. And then I'd show up in some rooms and people would pull me up on stage. I'm going, this is pretty cool. And then, uh, and then one morning, I think uh, Lisa like pinged me and just said, hey, I'm going to be uh, Breakfast of Champions. Grant Cardone's going to be there. You should come in. And so I, I come in and she like just completely just goes all over on top of me and just says all these great things, which was amazing. And thank you. I'm still embarrassed by all, all of it. And, and Grant and I started to chat. And, and man, this guy, obviously, 10X, we've all, we all know this brand. It's been around for a long time. Um, in fact, I wanna, I'm going to ask you a little bit about that in a little bit, but it's been, um, since then, Grant and I have been, you know, chatting back and forth. We obviously put a deal together earlier this year, got to meet Elena, Scarlett, um, Sabrina, and, and his family, and go to, and speak at 10X, which, by the way, the only other time I've wore this jacket was a Grant's, Grant's event, and it's a, so uh, it's that's a... His, that's his 10X jacket right there. That's a 10X jacket, so... So, I said, no, Glenn, this is a 10X jacket, okay? <laughs> so, so while I was getting to, go, to know Grant, I watched the second season of Under, Undercover Billionaire, which was just amazing. And it's still, you know, Discovery, or Discovery Plus, I think it is? Discovery Plus. As a business person, as an entrepreneur, you realize that business plans, you know, executed are way more valuable than going and getting a job. And, and, and that's, you know, and my dad had taught me years ago that it's, it's uh, better to, to be an entrepreneur um, which every one of us here on the room, because then your, your, your upside is unlimited. And I think that's the one thing that I got from 10X. It was really, it's about one, it's unlimited opportunity, but then also the amount of energy and drive and ambition that you bring to it. So I've got a few questions, but any, anything else you want to ask? Well, uh, no, add just, I'm just happy to be here with so many su super committed people in the room. And you guys, this is uh, this time that we're living in right now, we're probably in a super cycle of super cycles in real estate. And I hope you don't take it for granted. Like, this thing is going to be massive. The, the amount of money that, that we have never in America's time have never experienced the production of this much currency. And that money has to go someplace. And so uh, I was talking to Glenn Stearns last night about his business is extremely competitive right now because there's such a supply of money and it's a supply and demand thing. It's real simple. Like if you have, if you have three bananas at the, at the produce department and you can't get any more, somebody's going to pay extra for the bananas. You understand? And how many of you here eat bananas? Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Now, now, this is very important. This is how you get that premium. This is how you close the deal, okay? So when you print trillions of dollars, trillions and trillions and trillions, like most people don't even know what trillions of dollars are. That's basically my money and his money, okay? What's better than one billionaire? That's right, okay? A trillion, a trillion, how many billions is that? Uh, a thousand billions. A thousand billions. So when you print that much cash and you guys see your property prices go up 15, 20%, 30%, you're like, oh my God, housing's overpriced. Housing has not even partially kept up with the amount of money that's been printed. Not even close. Quit complaining about inflation. You have not experienced real inflation yet. It will come, but it's not here yet. All you're doing is getting a little warning in the neighborhood. We're coming. I'm coming for you, okay? So this is a great time to be in this thing, and this is a great time for you guys to be as a group, a strong group, working, because real estate, you can't do real estate by yourself. This is, a, this is a team sport right here, and you need people in Dubai and Detroit. You need people in Houston. You need people in Ohio. Like, you need people everywhere so you can connect the dots and really build something massive here.
Awesome. Awesome. As long as I believe in the goodness of it, as long as people win with it, I'm going to push it so hard. And I hope you guys, like if you take anything away from me in my life, it's like whatever I believe in, I push on. And if I don't believe in it, and if I think it's hurting people, I'm going to push against it. So with me, uh, uh, Glenn asked me this morning, he's like, man, how do you, like, how do you balance all these balls? I said, I said, bro, I just wait for the one that's coming down. I'm like, oh, shit, that one's about to bust. Wait, I got to catch that. So that's, I just put my attention on the thing that's going to happen next. And today, it's Glenn Sanford. Another big hand for the genius. Come on. Come on, rock it up. Rock it up. Let's go. Let's go, EXP. So, so a trillion dollars, big, big number, lots of money being printed. However, this is an interesting stat, and of course, Jeff Whiteside and I will talk about this in the background, all that, that number stuff. But if you think about five years, 500,000 agents, which brokerage in the history of real estate will be the first company to sell a trillion dollars worth of real estate in one year? EXP. What's most surprised you about EXP? So, look, I mean, obviously the growth. I mean, you guys had, you know, uh, 2,700 pe people here at your last event. Uh, what, two years ago before COVID, you're double that today. Like, that's, that's amazing. That means, that means, by the way, you had 5,500 people show up at an event. Like, it's very, very difficult for people to show up. And the fact that you guys showed up that made it out here, despite everything going on in the world, all the problems, the travel, the, the fears, uh, people telling you not to travel, oh, my God, Vegas. Uh, some of you were happily married when you got here. And then... <laughs> Some of you, some of you are going to have to kick up your AA meetings when you get back. So, you know, you fell off the wagon this weekend, but you're back, man. You're back here. And, and the next, look, this thing is in full, you're, you're going freaking nuclear. And, and I told Glenn, uh, uh, what, uh, nine months ago, when, when did we start doing something? Well, we started talking in February. And yeah, then, when and did then... you start paying me? Probably, probably March. Yeah, so I told him in March when he started paying me, I said, this shit's going to be big. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And he's like, how big? How big are you going to pay me? You know? So I said, because I will push on anything. I, like, like, so I start pushing on it. I start pushing on this. I got about 13, 14 million people in an audience that, that hit the follow button. Like everybody looks at the follow button, how many followers you got. It's not how many followers I got. It's how many people I irritate on a daily basis. Okay? I, I got 15 million people that like me. I got probably 100 million that are like, please get out of my feed. And I know I can convert those people, okay? I can convert those people, and that's what I'm doing every day. I, I walked in, I saw a in this trailer, I said, oh, I'm gonna kill that. Called my mama, I said, oh, mama, I found a, the girl of my dream. My mom's like, well, well are y'all going out? Y'all dating? Have y'all been someplace? I said, no, she doesn't want anything to do with me. She gave me that look. You ever had that look from a prospect like they don't even see you? Hey, my name is, and they're like looking right through you. Well, that's what Elaine did. She looked right through me. So, see, I know that no interest, zero interest is still better than what was happening right prior to that. You understand that? You guys understand that? Okay, look, 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 I'm wandering through. I'm a single man, lonely, want to kill something. So... Elena sees me, and she, she sees immediately, oh, he's a killer. Like, she doesn't like that either. She's like, she, she wants to be her own thing. So I don't know where she's coming from, but, but moments before I met her, and she had no interest, I didn't know she existed, and she didn't know I existed. Once I met her and became interested, same for a prospect, I am interested, but she is not. Shit, I'm halfway there. <laughs> You guys understand? This isn't about a positive mental attitude. I, this isn't some PMA bullshit. This is like, hey, I just moved the ball halfway down the field. I at least know what the damn target is now. You guys can't do anything without a target. Nothing is achieved in life without something to kill. This is the word. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Give yourselves a hand. Hey, let me tell you something, because the one thing you're going to need, you're going to need, you're going to need this, you're going to need energy. 
You don't need a good, you know, I'm going to tell you this whole PMA thing, the positive mental attitude, have a good attitude. I don't have a good attitude. I wake up pissed off. And then I take my aggression out on some target. Right? Like I'm like, what can I kill? See, see, I'm looking for something to accomplish every day. You know, because yesterday, unfortunately, whatever I accomplished yesterday no longer makes me happy today. You know? And, and that's when I saw Glenn's like, can you bring it back to my question? I'm on his question. See, when I saw EXP, I'm like, oh my God, man, this could one, open me up to another audience. I'm always thinking about myself. You guys, you guys, you need to write this down. You need to make yourself first. Right now, you're so far down the list. Oh, my mama, uh, it's my mama. I'm for my mama. I'm for my daddy. I'm for my kids. You're so far down the list, you can't take care of your kids. That's a fact. You're like, oh my God, everything's first before me, okay? Okay, well good, then if, if you don't take care of you, how can you take care of me? So, so like, when I talk about being selfish, when I saw EXP, I'm like, this thing's gonna be good for me. Okay, now how can I help him so it's good for him? And when we sat down, I'm like, how can this be a long-term thing? I don't need a quickie. Th th those don't fill you up. What I wanted was a career and I wanted a new audience and I wanted highly qualified, able and willing people. And that's who's in this room today. And, and, and so that excited me, excited me that you're, you're going to go international because I want to go international. I want to, I want to meet 7 billion people. I want 7 billion. I don't want to help 7 billion people. I mean, I'd like to, but it's not real. 7 billion people won't let me help them. Okay. But I can't help anybody if they don't know me. You understand? This is back to Elena. I cannot kill it if I don't meet it. Right? I can't be with it. Like literally the first time I saw her, I'm like, she's going to have my babies. She's going to have my babies, okay? Well, I just had to stay with my target. So every time I called her, I'd be like, hey, Elena, this is back in voice, uh, the, the boxes. She saw me call in. She wasn't working. She was an actress. She wasn't working at the time. She's watching the phone call. Hey, my name's Grant Cardone. She's just looking at it. I ain't answering that shit. Man, hey, this is Grant Cardone. I met you the other night. You know, uh, give me a call back when you get a chance. I did that 26 times. You guys quit on a listing after two calls. And then you send an envelope in the mail and wonder why people don't pick you up, stop you in the mall and something say, I got a listing for you. 26 times I called her. Stayed interest 26 times. 26 times she did not respond to me. It meant nothing to me. I just knew that every time was an investment in what I wanted. Okay? And I also knew this. I knew that I don't need her to agree to the love commitment. Okay? I need to agree to the love agreement. I need, it takes one, man. It doesn't take two. If it took two or 5,700, you guys wouldn't be sitting in the room. This shit's happening because of him. One person, give him a big hand. It takes one person. It takes one person. One person. It takes you guys to decide to build something big. Okay? He's done his part. You got to do the rest. So it takes me. If I want to resolve an argument, Elena and I get into a, a, a disagreement, an argument, which that should never happen. Shit, I ain't ever wrong. Okay? But it does happen from time to time because she loses her mind <laughs> and thinks something like I'm a bad driver. How many bad drivers in the room? How many men, how many men in the room are bad drivers? Let me hear 10x. Yeah, and the only person saying that to you is your wife. So she constantly tells me I'm a bad driver, but I've never hit anything. I just agree with her. I'm like, you're right. You're right. You're right. And just remember, you told me you didn't want to go out with me. You didn't want to marry me. You didn't want to have my babies. You didn't want anything to do with me. And it's been 19 years. And then if you, if you can just operate with that kind of attitude every day, one day you're going to wake up and have a bunch of swag. And then people are going to think you're obnoxious. And then you just stay, stay committed to your target. What is your target? What does it matter what people think about me? It's got nothing to do with my target. My target, Elena's like, how do you handle the haters? Uh, I don't even think about them. I think about my target. I don't think about what, what moments people are having about me. I got family members that don't like me. 
so do you. you got, your family's like, I love you so much. Well, good, give me a listing if you love me that much. <laughs> it's called active support. Huh? You want to support me? Huh? How about we sell your house and get the equity out? See, but you guys don't lean on people because you forget about your target. Long answer, Glenn. Go ahead. But just getting this every day into your, your consciousness, into your subconsciousness, into your superconscious, eventually it starts to become part of your DNA. And, and, and that's, the, that's the big thing. That's why this is such a great partnership because you're, you're, you're infecting my DNA. Yeah, so he's a, he's a virus. A little weird. So how do you build a great team? Like you he got on the edge of his chair. Does, 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 he's uh, getting does, way out there now. Yeah. So, so, does, so does Grant seem like a detail guy? So how the heck did you build a great team to support this amazing yeah, enterprise? Yeah, so, so this is a great question. So look, I'm not a detail guy, right? I'm not, I'm not, because I don't think the details matter that much, personally. I know a lot of people think they matter. It's all in the details. But I think it's all in like, what is it I'm trying to accomplish? What is it I'm trying to do, man? I don't know how to get there. You guys don't know how to get where you're going to go. If you did, you'd already done that, and it wouldn't even make you happy anymore. When you had babies, how many of you got kids here? 10X if you got a kid. Okay. I got two kids. I didn't know how to do that. When Elena and I had had babies, this is how you build a business, folks. When we found out she was pregnant, we were at the doctor, Dr. Uh, Crane. Weird Einstein kind of dude. Kind of like Glenn. And, and uh, hair, like, hair goes out here. He does the Kardashians and all these people, right? And so we go to him and, and Dr. Craig uh, Crane, Dr. Crane, he, I said, he said, oh, y'all are pregnant, man. I said, man, that's cool, man, that's cool. I said, look, Crane, I want to fix, I want him to call him doctor. I said, Crane, look, I want to bring, I want you to come to the house and I want you to, I want to deliver the baby at the house. I'm like, I'm acting like Elena hadn't even done anything. And I'm like, I, I, I'm like, I want you to come to the house and I want to, I want to deliver the baby in my bed. And he's like, no, nah, I don't do that anymore. I said, well, you're going to do it again for me. And he's like, no, my wife won't let me do it. There's insurance problem. I said, bullshit. You're coming to my house. We're going to have cigars, espressos, tequila, and we're going to deliver this little freeloader. Okay. I don't know how to take care of this kid. I don't know the details. You can read the books. You can do all that. You ain't going to do nothing until you do something. Okay? You're not going to know the details that even matter until you do something. Some of you get so bogged down in the details that you never get the damn thing done. You don't put an event on like, like this. We were talking backstage. I'm like, look, the lady said, hey, could you give us some help doing this and that? I'm sure, sure. But you need somebody on the site right here, right now, in the room, taking notes. Fix that, fix that, fix that, fix that. Because you're not going to know before it, and you're going to forget about it after it. Okay? So don't get bogged down in the details, man. Just stay focused on the target. What is it I want? I want to be a good dad, a good father. I want Sabrina to like me. Okay? So what does that mean? It means I need to spend some time with her. And I need to correct myself along the way. So same thing with our business. I mean, I had a, I had a company that had three or four employees for the first uh, 18 years of my business. I was just doing my business wrong. I didn't think about scaling. I didn't think about how many people could I touch. I didn't understand these kind of numbers. You know, I didn't understand the math. And, and you're not going to understand it. You're not going to think like that if you grew up like I did, which most of you did. Most of us come from very small think environments. Say 10x if you came from a small, tenant, uh, small think environment. Most of us did. Your daddy wasn't a billionaire. Your daddy wasn't on a fortune list. He wasn't on some Forbes list. He wasn't on some, you know, he, rocket ride uh, EXP. So how would any of us know? So what did your mama do? Because she didn't have a big ride, she paid attention to the details. Oh, we got to clean that. Clipping coupons, little stuff. See, we get micro-focused on little details. Elon Musk is not paying attention to the details. You agree? I, I agree. Too many details. He's like, I don't care about any of it, guys. That's where I want to go. That's the target. What's it take to get there? He doesn't even care about the money. This guy's such a big think. He's like completely free of all that, truly extroverted from the problems and the complexities. And that's what I like about Glenn because Glenn... And EXP is about something way bigger than just you and your team. 
When Elena's team wins, your team wins, folks. You guys understand that? You, this isn't a competition. Like, I see a lot of people, sometimes they become competitive in this space. I'm like, well, what are you doing, bro? Everybody's victory here is a victory. And you should be sharing other teams' victories. So, uh, to, so TEDx, you, you wrote the book, obviously, a, num a number of years ago. And what does that what does that mean to you? Why why 10x and what what ultimately what why 10x not 9x not 20x? Yeah, because you know that's good. That's a good question. So <laughs> everybody, come on, we got to get a T-shirt. <laughs> EXB, right? So so look, what happened was in 2008 the economy crashed. Nine and ten, I started. I was getting punished, just like. Two, I had three businesses, three employees, and two of the companies, like, they just literally, like, got, they were on life support. The third business was the real estate, and, and I'm sitting there with Elena. Lehman, Lehman uh, is uh, collapsing. Uh, Lehman, Lehman collapses. If you remember those images on TV uh, of people box, sending, taking their boxes, this company was 123 years old and failed. And, and by the way, that, that was supposed to be Citibank. I think it was Citibank that was supposed to fail. Instead, they just, they dumped it all on Lehman, okay? There's still a lot of that brokenness. 20 or 30 million people in America lost their homes underwater. Some of those people are still underwater today, believe it or not. And uh, I went, Elena and I were in our kitchen watching TV, watching this, and I'm like, oh my God, this is gonna be terrible. And she's like, well, what's happening? And I'm like, oh, we're gonna die. She's like, that's, but I ain't dying. You die. <laughs> yeah, I ain't dying. She's like, I ain't dying. You go figure this shit out. A little bonus. I walked in my room. I'm going I'm to kill this. <laughs> so I sat down, and the first thing I did was like, what did I do wrong? I worked 20 years, man banking money, working hard, getting up early. I didn't waste any money. I wasn't gambling, drinking, nothing. Go get money, take money, bring it to the bank, drop it off. Go get money, bring it to the bank, drop it off. Paid everything off, no debt, no problems, nothing. And I kept looking, what did I do wrong? I didn't do any of the housing bullshit, the subprime loans, nothing. What did I do wrong? And then I looked at it, I'm like, I had $50 million in debt at the time, and the bank was calling me. One of the problems was the bank was like, we need you to pay that loan. When? Uh, we need that loan paid before the end of the month. Huh? It's 2010, bro. Ain't nobody got money. Why y'all calling me? I've never missed a payment, ever. Never missed a payment. Never, ever missed anything. Because you got the money. And we're collecting from people that have money. And we're letting everybody else get off with the bullshit. And I was like, oh, shit. And I'm looking at this. I'm looking at my problem. I have it all sketched out like, like you have the, the, the mind map. The mind map. Before mind mapping. I was doing mind mapping. I would meet it 20 years later. So I'm like, oh, if I was bigger, I wouldn't have this problem. And I asked myself, self, how much bigger would you have to be? I said, well, I'd have to. I'd have to owe them like 500 million, not 50 million, because the amount of money they were given by the government to save this bank was equal to that number. And I went to Elena all excited. I'm like, I figured it out. She's like, what's the answer? I said, we got a 10 extra lives. And that's how that number came up. Like, it was like, the next time this shit happens, I need no details. I need $500 million worth of debt, not 50 million. Okay, that was the new target. I'm gonna go get $500 million worth of debt. I'm gonna have 10 times the customers, 10 times the products. I'll be in 10 more verticals than I am right now. I was in one little vertical. If I was in 10, three or four of them would have got slaughtered, six of them would have taken care of me. I'm not gonna own 600 apartments. At the time I owned 600, I'm gonna own 6,000. And that was in 2010, today's 2020. We have 12,000 apartments, not 600. We have. 700 employees, not three. We have about $4 billion of holdings, not, uh, I don't know what I had then, $30 million. I got about $2 billion worth of debt, good debt too, happy debt, okay? 
Um, and, and at the time we had 50 million, so I 40 X that. And so when you come to me and tell me what you want to do, I'm like, that's 10 X. Let me get on the EXP team and see what we can do to blow it up. It's one of those pieces that I, I recognized the, in Grant um, and I had in common, which is that we've always been about, you know, the, the frontline person. We were frontline people. Like I was an active agent. You were an active sales guy on the front lines. I think you were oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, that one. That, that was a big one. That was that was the big one. Yeah, one thousand. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, the active... Come up from the mud. How many of you came up from the mud? How many mudders here? From nothing. From nothing. Come on, man. Let me hear you. Hey, well, don't stay there. Don't stay there. Coming up from the mud's one thing. Okay, stay in there. That's just dumb. You got to get out of the mud now. You got to do what this man did. Dig, dig your way out and up. And then become an example. Like, like... You, you guys got to understand it. It doesn't matter how much goodness you have in your heart. It doesn't matter how much you've been through in your life. Until you do something, nobody will care. Okay, you have to. If you want to change your community, if you want to improve conditions, if you want to lift your people up, you have to go do something. That's when people will listen to you. Yeah, absolutely. And and the other part that I was that was resonating was providing the opportunities to those same people, not the institutions. Like, you look at every other real estate brand out there, and every single one of them took money from big institutions and didn't give the opportunity to their agents. Um, you know, they took the, the big private equity deal, they took the big institutional investment, they did the IPO with the guys, they did the road show, and, and they raised money from all these other people whose whole focus was to make money on the agent and the and the professional, the only people we provided that opportunity to was to our agents, brokers, and staff. That's a big deal, guys. Like, like most people, most people, including myself, I did not understand how the game was played. The game is played like this. The big banks, the JPs, the Goldmans, all the names, the Wells Fargo, all these big institutions, the New York Lights, the MetLifes, these are massive trillion dollar companies. You guys are paying attention to the billionaires. He's talking about a different level. He's talking about people that can write off billionaires. Okay, these are trillion dollar companies. There's two companies on this planet, Blackstone and Vanguard, that are gonna be worth $20 trillion each, okay? For years, this has been going on for 100 years in this country, okay? This is probably the Rothschilds money. All that's been recycled, put back together under different names to protect, and it's kept every person in this room out of the game. We are going through the biggest disruption in, in almost every category. Not just, not just in real estate, in automotive, okay, electric cars, okay. We, we got, we got uh, the democratization of currency. Currency is being disrupted. We have uh, people not going to restaurants now. Food is delivered to you. Everything is being uh, disrupted right now, including what your play is. This is not about a positive mental attitude. It's about you getting your game straight on saying, this is my target. I want to create wealth and freedom for myself and my family. EXP is my vehicle, okay? EXP is my vehicle. You can't have 50 vehicles. You ain't, you ain't Floyd Mayweather, okay? I got to have more than one vehicle. You need one vehicle in the beginning, one damn thing. Put your money in that one damn thing. Invest your energy in that one thing. Get your family hearing about that one thing, not 500 things. Okay, and focus on that until that brings you a bag, brings you the equity. When you get the money, you ought to be buying stock or you ought to be investing in the real estate in the neighborhood that you're selling. What one last message do you want to give to our EXP family? Obviously, you're part of the EXP family. Elena's part of the EXP family. Elena, you brought in 350 or so people into your organization in just a short few months, so congratulations. But any, any, any last yeah, so look, I would just tell everybody, last, last it, first, I, I just want to truly say, I mean, I, I know I've been having fun up here because I like to have fun. Who likes to have fun? Woohoo! And, and I did this with Glenn and EXP because I believed that I could have fun with Glenn. Like, I, I don't want to just do business. You know, there's no shortage of business. There's no shortage of opportunity available. I want to do business with people that are fun to do business with. 
Uh, I can't, there's some corporations that probably won't hire me because I'm going to come up here and do my thing and they're going to be like, oh no, you can't do that here. So, uh, but see me and Glenn, we can have fun. Debbie, I like Debbie. I like what they're doing. I like the dream, man. I like the bit, the width, the width and the depth and the reach of it, right? I like the idea that I could have, I could help people in other countries. Maybe they don't even speak my language. So I would just tell you guys to think way bigger than you're thinking right now. Quit thinking about your little, your little neighborhood. Quit thinking about just your family. Start thinking about who could my new family be? You know, you guys, all of you in the room, you need to remember like your family, the family unit that you have is, a, it, it's going to expire. Like if you don't add to it, you're going to end up with no family. My, my mom, my mom was my best friend. She was the one that I would always, she taught me how to play uh, blackjack. She would bring me to this town. She was my best friend. My dad died when I was 10. My mom died 12 years ago. My best friend. Still today, if I have a victory today, I want to call my mom. 12 years she'd been gone. Damn, I wish I could call mom today. And, and, um, but I can't. My older brother, lost my older brother when I was 20 years old. Three down right there. Right? Lost six dogs. A couple of good friends. And, and so... Like my, my, my group is getting smaller. So how do I combat that? Oh, I'm going to add family members. I'm going to add people. Maybe you don't have my last name. Doesn't mean we can't be family. I, I got to extend my family. How do you help family? You support your family, man. You build your family. You find like-minded people. Some of you got family members that are not like-minded. You just need to admit that. You got a brother that went bad. How many of you got a brother that went bad? How many of you got a weird uncle? Everybody's got a weird uncle, okay? So what you got to do is you got to add an uncle or two. Find a Glenn Sanford to be your brother. This guy's my brother, man, okay? Okay, he's different than me. I'm different than him. But that's what makes a family. And just make sure that your family members, they could be black, brown, men, women, younger, older, make sure they got like-mindedness. Elaine and I are on the same page. So get around some people. Come on. Make a commitment when you leave here to build, to build your family's fortune. Great people around you, like-minded people, people that can travel, people that have money, people that are healthy, people that are doing the right thing, at the right thing, for the right reasons. Glenn Sanford, I want to thank you so much for having me here, man. Okay. Thank you. Greg Cardone. How do I 10x my life? How do I 10x my life? Yeah, bro, you got to get around people that are doing big stuff, bro. You get, your family, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your aunt. If you're not getting what you want, you've given the people around you enough time. If you're not where you want to be, guys, you've given the people in your life enough time. You need some new people in your life. Thank you, Grant. Thank you, Glenn. I've got one more quick question from Yarek out of Illinois. Hey, Grant, uh, I just wanted to ask you, what was the biggest obstacle that you need to overcome in your life, and what was possible because of that? Uh, the biggest obstacle in my life, I mean, I've had a lot of obstacles, so um, my, my drug addiction was definitely, you know, a big problem for me, because if I, if I wouldn't have got over my drug addiction, I'd be de dead today. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, the second, the second big obstacle was, you know, people, man, it's people. It's always people, the people around you. I've had to let a lot of people go around me, friends around me, people that didn't want to grow, family members, like just cause they're family don't mean they're good for you. Like, man, I love you, man. I love you, man. I love you. You're cool. I love you. But bro, look, like if you guys got really honest, there's been a time in your life where you weren't, you weren't may be the right person to be in your family's life. So there's been family I've had to say, you know what, just for a little bit, when, when, when we take a little break, when we take a little break, you know, you go get your shit together. If that happens, doors always open, come back in. Same with employees. I've had employees work with me, partners work with me. They were great for five or six or seven years. And then something happened. They, I'm like, dude, you've been the best. Look at your numbers. Your numbers are terrible. I was the best. 
If you were in the NBA, the MLB, or the, uh, uh, or the NFL, they're like, hey, man, we cutting you, dude. See, but you guys don't do that. You guys allow everybody to stay in your life just because they've been in your life. And so it's, it's a very difficult thing to be ruthless because that's what people are going to call you. They're going to call you ruthless and selfish. And, and I'm just trying to improve the quality of my life, my family's life, my, ch my church's life, my, my community, grow my brand. And that means I got to get rid of the venom and the poison and the enemies. Right on. Right on. All right. We've got a question for Glenn. Glenn, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. We've got Daniel Contino from Connecticut. Daniel, ask Glenn your question. Glenn, when do you think EXP will see a global MLS? EXP MLS. Yeah. So one of the, uh, obviously, as, as uh, well, actually, most of the people here in the room, most of the agents, uh, are used to MLSs. And just in the U.S. and Canada is pretty unique in that we're really the only two markets that have a robust MLS. And that allows, obviously, for lots of cross-collaboration with other brokerages. But when we start to go um, international, it really comes down to the office and what listings they have, and then they advertise them on Zillow-like platforms because that's all they have, and it's highway robbery the way they sort of have the advertising model. And so when we think about it, most of the offices, when you go international, are fairly small, so it's a fairly small amount of inventory in each office, so there's not enough inventory. So as we grow, uh, you know, whether it be you know, India, we grew to over 1,000 agents in just 10 months, and, and so we're you know, probably 1,100 agents or so. And you start to think about as these markets, we get into to these markets, and we get a significant, a, a critical mass of, of agents and inventory, we can actually now create an internal MLS, and we can actually make that then also publicly facing and not have to pay the high fees that we are being paid to these third parties. So, so really, it's a combination of both critical mass and then and a little bit of technology. The technology is actually easier than actually the, 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 the former part, which is actually because the model for us is going to be uh, you know, accomplished in very short order. And she wants to know, Grant, who inspires you? Oh, my God. So many, so many people inspire me. You guys inspire me. Like, I got to tell you, like, like, just because I am where I am in my life, I can look out and see you guys on the come up right there, that man right there. Man, you guys that want it, man, you're, you, you don't have to be big to inspire somebody. You just need to have the light. You got to have the light, man, the light, and you got to breathe on it. Look, you don't have to be up here to inspire somebody. You just need to be wanting to get someplace. And people that are ethical inspire me. People that go out of their way to help somebody that can in no way, shape, or form get something in return inspires me. People that, people that want to help me. Like every day I got somebody coming to me. Hey, man, I want to do business with you. Okay, but do you do business with me? That inspires me when people do business with me. When people buy my stuff, that inspires me. I'm like, God, I got support for the stuff I'm doing. And, and so when people come to me and be like, hey, I want to do some business with you, Grant, I'm like, but you don't do business with me, you know? So when you guys support me, when you, you, when you see my, like all that's inspiration to me. So everybody in the room, if you're leading an ethical life, doing big things, not giving up on your dream, you inspire me. Grant and Glenn, thank you for the inspiration. Thank you, brother. You inspire us. EXP family, round of applause for Grant and Glenn.